They got me locking in on the business Stop letting messy bitches mess with your business You cross me, don't ask Brian Hit them knees and ask that man for forgiveness Cause he don't never make mistakes, I understand I'm a witness and I get it Everybody mean no good It's life outside that city, everything ain't about no hood Before you risk it, ask yourself if that was you What niggas would Shit about who gon' be here the longest, that's understood Yeah, every other day Other shit that's under me, that's in my way And this life is what you do, not what you say yeah. Let them trick you out, your spot is over Tricks for kids, so let them play The one that make the bid, the one that gotta lay I'ma always be on top, like we on the bone Rory came without a top, back is not the trunk I ain't acting what I'm not, knowing that I don't Niggas acting like you well, but I know you won't Sure, KB Some smooth talk type shit right no there. Cap, <laughs> yeah, remember once song, again. To me, bro, no cap, bro. Facts. He, um, Darren picked that song, song of the week once again. Kenneth Brother through my eyes, and once again we have a special guest, one of the first guests. Well, you are the first guest who has officially written, wrote a book, yeah, and put it out in real life, yeah. And kids are learning from this book. Yeah. How does it feel, man? God, it's the greatest. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it might be just that simple, but it's that right. simple. Like, Heard that. Uh, thankful, grateful, right. honored, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything to the one above, because without him giving me the ideas, I wouldn't even have the message to give, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Now, um, we're going to get into a lot of who Darren is and your book, your new book that you put out, um, Eight Ways to Be an Entrepreneur, and your target audience. Audience is kids, right? Um, my target audience is kids, mm-hmm. but it's really for everybody. I was I was gonna get to that because as I was going over the um book, the eight points that are on there, I look at that and say these could apply to everybody who's doing something with their craft, like the hard work, the discipline, the get get the goals done, big or small. I was like, hey, this. This is targeted for kids, but if you're a grown-up, you should apply these to yourself as well. What made you come up with these eight specific points? So uh, I was asked this question by my uh, by a mentor of mine. Mm-hmm. Like, when you're writing, who, who are you writing to? Okay. And I told him, as much as I'm writing for the future generation, I'm writing for my future bloodline. Okay. I'm, so I'm, that means I'm writing for my children's children, children, children. Right. So if I'm going to talk to them, I'm trying to talk to them as powerful as I can, but in the most simplest form. So it's like, if a parent read that book to their kid, I'm educating the parent and the kid. Mm -hmm. It's like a two for one. And it's not just for kids. It's meant to inspire everyone. Okay. Now, let's talk about your upbringing. Are you from New Orleans? Yeah, I'm from New Orleans. Okay, what part of New Orleans are you from? LGS New Orleans. Okay, West Bank. You know that. Okay, are you one of the people with West Bank is the best bank that you Man, represent that? That's my bloodline. <laughs> <laughs> Heard kids, that. Now, growing up on a West Bank, would did you ever think you would become an author? Man, no, oh, man. That's the, and, and when people say, like, what your purpose is, we never know what our purpose is. Right. And then when it hits you, it can be scary. So it's like, I was always one of those people that I'm fearless. Mm-hmm. No matter what the obstacle is, because uh, you have to get comfortable with being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. So when it was like, man, if it's gonna be books, then it's gonna be books. Then, but you have to apply that same. The hustle is so simple, and the blueprint is so simple. You can apply it to everything. Okay. So me being an entrepreneur first, me being a teacher first, then becoming an entrepreneur, mm-hmm. I, it, it walked me into being an author because now I can educate you from something that I actually went through myself. Okay, now you you mentioned that you was a teacher. Yeah, I was a second grade math teacher assistant at Smothers Academy. Okay, for now, almost like three years. Okay, um, so that's where I guess when I was looking at the book, yeah, there, there was a teacher and yeah. what, what was his name? Ben Dale or something? His name is uh Mr. B Dale. So uh, it, it, Mr. B Dale comes from uh my first mentee I ever had was his name was Frank B Dale. Okay, and he was like. It grew into a real brotherhood where that was my real brother. Mm, I'm glad because I was going to touch on this. Because we came well. from we came we came from the same place. You okay. know what I'm saying? So with with me seeing the impact I had on him mm-hmm. and watching him blossom into the person he was blossoming to, then that really inspired me to be like 
better for others. Like seeing it, seeing the bigger picture, basically. Okay. But uh, tragically, he passed away. He got killed mm-hmm. through gun violence in New Orleans. You know what I mean? He was seventeen years old, mm-hmm. and he was he was going to be living with me in Atlanta. I was in Atlanta. He was going to be living with me. Mm-hmm. And when that happened, that kind of pushed me into a, a real depression. And that's when I found my purpose. Like him passing away was actually me walking into my purpose because it made me want to educate kids. But I didn't want to go back to the uh, the struggles of dealing with being a teacher because oh, yeah. being in the education system, you have more than one hat. And I I, I tip my hat to those people mm-hmm. because it's that's that's one of the most undervalued jobs that people don't understand. Like right, that. Those people are with your kids more than you with your kids. You right. know what I'm saying? The teachers are they not just they not just asked to teach like no more. It's like, like you gotta be a therapist, everything. counselor, all type of things. And watching and I was one of those people that actually brought my uh work home. So why go dealing with some of those things, like mm-hmm. that's troubling some when you're watching like all the stereotype things that happens within the school system with the kids and stuff like that. You know what I mean? So I wanted to make a change without having to actually be in the classroom but still give the same impact. Okay. And that what made me do books. There's only a few things that live forever, and that's music, film, and books. Very so good. that made me choose books. Now, I want to get more into your um, relationship and impact with your close friend that um, passed away. Um, you said the type of impact you had on him when – how. He was um like changing, becoming a better person. How, what type of impact and I guess lessons did you show him? That so you've seen it. So it's more of um, the generation that's 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 here now. The kids now that's here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it might look like they're they're uh, troubling some, mm-hmm. but they're just confused. Like they they only follow the people that they can relate to. Okay. So Frank didn't know I was from the same place that mm-hmm. he was actually located. And when he saw me, where I was from, our hood, when he saw me, it, 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 it showed him a different way that you can be from this place. Mm-hmm. And you can be from this environment and still have the same, get the same love and respect mm-hmm. that the gangsters would get because you chose to be who you are. People will always accept you for who you are. Right. You know what I mean? And me, I was a teacher, and I'm, I'm able to talk to all the Killers and drug dealers. Like, mm-hmm. I'm able to have, I'm, I'm having an impact on those people because that's my actual brothers. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And they accept me for who I am. Right. So I never, I never voice. have to, I never have to be somebody that I'm not. Yep. You know what I mean? So him seeing that was him, it was more personal than mm-hmm. anything. Him able to see, like, man, you know, he could be a teacher, but at the school, I see him in the hood too mm-hmm. with, his, with his uniform on and he get the same respect as. The killers and drugs because they accept me for who I am. That's a that's a good point. Um, for a lot of young people growing up, um, what's the importance in being yourself growing up? Because it's e- easy to get led astray, follow a, a crowd, or, try, or just trying to fit in. Sometimes it's kids want to fit in with other people. It's important with being um, yourself because you're more relatable to other people. That's that's just like you. I, I never saw myself as being like. Like they didn't have other people that thought like me, and they didn't have other people that that, that moved how I moved because I didn't look at myself no different than no one. You know what I mean? It's just more of we are, we all can be from the same environment and choose different paths, but mm-hmm. we can still have the same effect if we just choose to be ourselves. You know what I mean? People are gonna know when you not when you're being authentic or when you're not being authentic. Right. So I read to be I read to be myself mm-hmm. through the scrutiny. You know what I mean? Right. Through whatever storm, I'd rather be myself. So, because I want the kids to understand more, like, be you. Because being you, being someone else, can never be authentic to who you truly is. Thanks. Now, what kind of kid were you growing up, Dan? I was bad, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to my mom. I call her my OG. That's the love of my life, man. Like, she's just my mom. Shout out, mom. Mom's. mom's out the night walk, man. Okay. Lord <laughs> nine, you hear me? And my dad, he from LJ, you know what I'm saying? So. Okay. My, I, I got a little a little bit of both of moms though. Mom's different. Mm-hmm. Five foot gangster. <laughs> <laughs> Ten toes down, huh? You know what I mean? Like okay. she she'll she'll do anything I ask her to do, give me the shirt off her back. I just gotta hear her out about it. <laughs> okay. Now um what high school did you go to? 
I mean, I went to O'Perry Walker. That's where I met some of the closest people. I'm still attached to the, to this day. You know what I'm saying? I played basketball my whole life. Okay. So I went to O'Perry Walker. Then um, my senior, no, my junior year, I ended up transferring and going to Edna Carr. Okay. And I love my Walker brothers. You know what I'm saying? But I love my Carr brothers too. You know what I'm saying? So I got a little <laughs> bit of both. You know what I mean? But I had, it's like uh, at Walker, I was. Uh, I grew up brotherhood with those, those dudes. You right. know what I mean? My brothers, man. I love them dudes, man. Team BNC, them my dudes, man. Mm-hmm. BNC, my dudes. You know what I mean? Um, when I went to car, I felt like I found myself individually. Right. Because that was I junior mean? senior year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so you I found coming myself, into your own. I, I found myself individually, and I ended up uh, seeing a whole different life just only 15 minutes away. You right. know what I'm saying? It was totally different from Walker. So it was mm-hmm. like I fell in love with just the school uh camaraderie mm-hmm. because it's a lot of it's a lot of females at that school that helped me pass bro no cap bro <laughs> shout out to them no cap <laughs> okay um did you attend college yes i did i attended Dillard university okay and then i went to uh, southern university at new orleans okay um Dillard is a private institution right yeah did you get have a scholarship what did you go bro, for i actually keep it g i got myself in school how just uh, I set out my first year. I, okay. My first year I set out just being confused, man. You know, know what I'm saying? Know. Being confused. You fresh out of high school. It's like I always had the entrepreneurial, entre- Hold on, let me get it right. Mm-hmm. Entrepreneurship spirit. Okay. I had that spirit because my stepdad he was an entrepreneur and he sold cars and he did real estate and he did music and he was a DJ. So he did a lot of things that taught me entrepreneurship. Okay. So I wanted to kind of do that, but then I still kind of had my mom in my mind, like go to school type of thing. So mm-hmm. I put myself in school. She was I shocked the whole house when I did that. Damn, that's <laughs> kind of crazy because like I hear a lot. Of, I ask a lot of people sometimes, and they be like, um, "I'm just going to school to do it for my mom or my grandma, uh, yeah. family member." Is that is that healthy? No, no, <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Um, so did you finish? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost done. How long bro. you last? I was you, almost done, bro. I lasted to my like my to my senior year. Yeah, bro. Damn, go why, bro? Yeah, go you back. can go back. Though. I could go back and get my. I could go back and get it, but bro, listen. Now that like the world has turned, yeah, you know what I mean, changed. bro. I'm going back and get it just for my mama, bro. Heard that. I'm gonna go back and get it, but mom, same same sentiment. Let Still us get to mom. the bag first, mom. Yeah, so, <laughs> what, what did you go for? I we went, actually, I went for uh, sociology. Okay. And I also went for business. So, like, uh, my the sociology uh, professor, like, it, it's, it's the discuss of, like, you know, discussing people and the way people okay. think and stuff like that. So, and But I'm a good people's person, so mm-hmm. I always was intrigued by that. So, I actually used to get A's in that class. So, okay. And my business class, I was, like, always business mindset. So, it was like that, too. So, that was... I was going for okay. Um, I want to get. I want to touch. I want to get to this. Um, how did you become an author? You touched on a little bit by being inspired by your friend. What was that first moment like? Putting. How did you write it? Did you put it in your notes? Did you write it on a physical piece of paper? How was it? So as you know, it's like every author have their own process. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Um, Frank, Frank. And another brother of mine named Lorenz, you know what I'm saying? That those 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 two young men are really my motivation. Okay. And I could really like I got so many books in this phone right here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I have another phone that I call the vault. You know, I call my mom at the vault. So mm-hmm. I send every you know, we liking all information in. You okay. know what I'm saying? Um but I usually do it off my phone. All right. Do it off my phone. Both of my phones. I work an overnight job, so I sit in both of my phones. I have one phone with Google on it, and I like I just, bro, it's just the process. I I can I can't really just give someone the blueprint without have without them actually sitting down watching me do it because it's one of those things that right. I can't explain because it's like you are entering a whole another part in your brain and mm-hmm. you're actually like only you could tap into that. You know mm-hmm. now. What is the difference between, well, is there a difference between author and a writer? No. No? No. Author, I mean, my thing is like, a writer is probably a writing for someone. Mm-hmm. An author is a person that's going to write their own things and 
You okay. Know, show their face to it. They all right. Like you know, you could I could write something for you, mm-hmm. and you just put your name. To, you know, put your name on it. So that makes me an author. Make you a businessman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Make you a businessman. Okay. You know what I mean? I'll... But it's like, you know, everything has their own contracts and stuff like that. To mm-hmm. it. You know what I mean? Because the thing about being an author and even just writing, it royalty checks are real. All right. Those are those checks come once a month the rest of your life, no matter how much it is. And just the thought of that made me like on the business aspect, I always me look uh, me as an author. I look at myself, my brand, my author brand as an actual business. Okay. So me looking at it in business form, that's something that's longevity, mm-hmm. and something being longevity, no matter how much it is to me, won't will always win for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? We'll so always carry value. You could, you could we could we pour in ourselves as entrepreneurs every day. So understanding uh, being an entrepreneur, you understand the, the value of self and pouring into self. So. Me being an author, it's like the more books I write, the more royalty checks I get. When, oh. Steve, when Steve Harvey touched my book, when you know what I'm saying, Ella okay. DeGeneres, uh, you know, even like just Super, the the mayor, who, whoever, like okay. you know, whoever got allowed, you know, to touch my book, you know. I I want to get into more of the background of like the book, the book game, book deals. I want, I have a question about this. This was a um topic on Twitter. New York's bestsellers. When every book comes out, it always says this is the number one New York bestsellers. How does that work? Because people had questions like, how is every book a number one when it comes out? That works by sales. Mm-hmm. <laughs> work by sales, man. It's like you're selling yourself, like so. It's like you're selling your your, your book to people, like in different forms of social media. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the, everything is always dealing with numbers. Okay. It's always dealing with numbers. And how do you measure yourself with your numbers? What is a successful book release for you, like first week or something? Bro, honestly and truly, I don't care about the numbers. Mm -hmm. I don't care about the money. You know what I mean? On the business aspect, I do want to make sure that the ship is ran properly. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But numbers and money don't matter to me because I know the information I'm giving is not just life changing, but go change the world. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean, and that's n- that's no value you could put on that. That's priceless to me. Okay, um, with this book, eight ways to be an entrepreneur. Was this one draft? Was it how how long did it wrote, take to I make wrote this? this? I wrote this book in three days, mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Okay, I broke it down into steps because steps is easy to break down into. Like I could go back right back into the book, so I I'll, I'll do three steps. And I'll do two more steps. That's five. I'll finish my I'll finish myself off, do three more. Then mm-hmm. the last the last night I probably do the ending. The ending. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just about it's like a puzzle. You just break everything down mm-hmm. and you put it all together. And then when you put it all together, go back over it, make sure it makes sense. Then go back over it again and make sure it makes sense. How long how long does the editing process go of going back over? How long I mean, does that be? As long as you want it to be. Okay. You know what I mean? See me, I'm I'm so self driven, bro. Like if I gotta, I'm not just jumping into something. Just oh, I'm about to do this. No, mm-hmm. I write that stuff. I write it down first. Mm-hmm. Then after I write it down, all right, do you about to do this? Then I'm gonna write something else down. Mm-hmm. All right, now boom, that that was the rough draft. That's the final draft to the blueprint. Mm-hmm. So boom, once I get to the final draft to the blueprint, now I'm, now I'm in front of my phones. Okay. All right. So what you talking about? Once you once you, you know you break everything is like you gotta put you gotta take take your time write it all down. Cause once you jump into, cause you jumping into a part of your brain that you could be in there for hours. I be in my brain for hours sometimes when I'm in the flow, and it's just like I got the music going in the house, the vibes right. Like I'm sitting in my, I chose to be in my phones and not actually write it down because when you write and write, could take a toll on your hands. Yes. So when, but when you texting, you could text a paragraph, and how how fast you could text a paragraph. Wait. Um. Question. The do you. Ever get writer's block? I'm one of those people that uh. And I, what is that I, to you? Before you go right on. to me, I I don't know something that I never had. Right, you know what I mean, and I don't know something that I would never want to put on myself. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Am I educated on what it is? Mm-hmm. Yes, but I never experienced it, and as you know, by the grace of God, I never experienced it because that I don't. You don't never know how far you could get out of that place. You know what I'm saying? So, mm-hmm. It's more like when I'm writing something, 
I I write things to uh when I'm once I get inspired to write, mm-hmm. I already got the blueprint to. That's why I'm saying I'm so like structured that if I'm writing a book for, for, about you, mm-hmm. I'm gonna write down everything that I have that I want to write about you. I'm gonna write all the steps down that I wanna I wanna uh, speak on, and then when I get inspired to write. I'm going to jump into it, but when I jump into it, I already know what I'm writing about. Just make sure the title is Mr. Visuals. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. <laughs> now, I got um, you now um, on to this. When you finish the book, who are you? what's the goal? What's after? What is the process after? How do you get it to the platforms? Who are you pitching it to to pick it up? All right, so it's like it's my public, the publishing company. Uh, it's the publishing company I'm signed to. Well, I recently, I'm, I recently was signed to was uh, Black and White Productions. Okay. Ms. Nikki, they they're not my publishing company anymore, mm-hmm. but they became my publishing coaches. They're the ones teaching me how to publish my own stuff. Okay, you know what I mean. Um, that was nice of them. Very, mm-hmm. very God, God, God. I keep saying God because he's like, man, without that lady, boy, look, you don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> that lady did a lot for me, bro. But really. Really heaven sent, man. Um, but Miss, like I said, Miss Nikki, I, I just all I had to do was just send everything to her. She'll do the crammer check. She'll like every, everything. You get what I'm saying, bro? So when you got somebody that's real, like that's doing everything for you, mm-hmm. and all they asking you to do is give the words. Oh, it's small. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Because bro, it's like she she going over it. She go edit it herself. She go grammar check it herself. The pronunciation, everything, like every part of the book. Okay, um, that made my process very easy. Can a publishing, can a publishing com- company reject a book? Yeah. Um, for what reason? It's just like a record label. Like okay. if you think like if your music, if, if if you have something you're talking about, mm-hmm. and they want to in, like invest help invest because it's like you have to pay your publishers. You know what I mean? It's not nothing that's free because mm-hmm. they have people that that do self publishing just off that aspect of paying someone. But okay. Just like I told you, like it's very convenient for a person who don't know how to be, be an author to have a publisher because the mountain you have to climb doing self-publishing mm-hmm. is just the same mountain uh independent artists i have to climb all right i, I get, get what, what i'm saying, saying bro yeah. so it's like those people are really like you paint you like i said if you're a real entrepreneur investing in yourself is small so when when they told me how much i'm like oh yeah that's good because now all i gotta do is just Give the words. Mm-hmm. Me giving the words the, brought a whole different light to what now they becoming my coaches and they teaching me how to do it now. Okay. Now with with the book, is it a goal to get it in schools? Because oh yes, I think it should that's be on a, the shelves of schools, schools libraries. Yeah. So that's like actually the process we were we're going through right now. Like you know, what I mean, um, my book has touched two hundred and fifty eight platforms online. Okay, and now that I oversee my accolades online, I'm doing things in physical bookstores now. So now we're going to put it in Barnes and Nobles. It's going in Books a Million. Mm-hmm. Uh, so many, I'm, like it's so many places, but it's so many places that we're actually putting it mm-hmm. that. It's just like, you know, you got to do the groundwork. That's what it really is, man. So, um, Do you have a physical copy? Bro, I promise you. I ordered my physical copies, mm-hmm. and they're going to be here after Thanksgiving, but I got you. I'm going to bless you. Facts. Now, the process of getting it into these big, big box stores, mm-hmm. the biggest stores of them all, a lot of people say books are dead and newspaper dead. A lot of people say that. What do you think of that? statement is it outrageous or is it logical i mean it's like all right so it's like without books it wouldn't be no films mm-hmm. it wouldn't be no music i mean without just 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 without just knowing how to write a word down <laughs> on a piece of paper it wouldn't be no nothing mm-hmm. so you can't say books are dead because like i just said there's only three things that live forever mm-hmm. film music and books, and all that has to do with someone's taking something and writing it down. Mm-hmm. Facts. And they live forever. Okay. Um, question. Were you a reader growing up? 
no. <laughs> That's why, why I'm trying to tell you. Why you like, said it like you offended? Cause, <laughs> bro, like, because I be wanting people to understand, like, when you when you do, you know your purpose because it's like it's something that you never would have thought. Like, I never thought this for myself. I never wanted to. Like, you can put me ten years ago and be like, Darren, you gonna be an author, an author, but I know all the things. Huh? I probably would have been. Ninety-eight on the list of things I'm gonna be. All the way, all the way, man. But yeah, bro. Are you a reader now? Yeah. Okay. Well, what are some um, I guess genres you like to read? Is it certain things? Honestly, bro, I just like I'm one of those people that if I read, I'm reading to uh to build more into the ship. Like I invest more into myself, so I pick out what areas of myself that I want to better, and I just read on that and educate myself on that. Okay. Um. What the what what you doing now? Do you um? I wanted to ask you about the dialogue that you put in your book because you put characters in this latest book, um, the Nicole, the Robert, the Page. Mm-hmm. Um, when you creating and writing your book, how do you I guess get that in there like the dialogue? Cause I write like certain <laughs> short films, and it'd be kind of hard to put yourself in each character because I'm writing different characters. I try to keep it as low as I could because you, you have to it's like a conversation. Yeah, yeah, you're like, I'm John right now. You're talking to you like, you write the next line, page. No, and you're trying to get into it. So how do you do that? Bro, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm laughing because that's what I mean when I say it. you you going to really notice a guy. It's a, you have everyone have a hidden talent within themselves. And I Facts. really be, I t- that's why I told you, I tap into my brain, bro. Mm-hmm. And I'll, really, I'll be going, they'll be like, hey, hello, Darren. Yes, Darren. No, Darren. What well, page? Why did you say that? Yes. Well, Darren. I said that because of this. And then, Darren, well, can you explain this to me? No problem at all, Paige. Exactly. Can, like, I'm on, but bro, it's like a conversation with yourself. And mm-hmm. it's like, it's, it might seem like crazy, but it's not crazy. You know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, it's really just. Right. <laughs> That's crazy. I, I wanted to get that. Um, that um, thought from you because I be having that same type of thing. I'm gonna break it down to you more, but yeah. Um, who are some authors, uh, writers that I guess you looked up to or inspired? Uh, Man, if, listen, if any? No cap, though, bro. They got writers within the city right now. Mm-hmm. Let me people, know that people don't know about. Hold on, because uh, I have a friend of mine. She wrote a book. It's it's called. Uh, hold on, because I won't get stuff right. I don't want to be getting people stuff wrong. It's get called. It right, it's called Violet's Hair. It's called Violet's Hair. I got another good friend of mine, K. Matthew. Okay. He wrote a children's book, man. This man is one of the most inspiring people I know because he did some time, came home, and still was able to flourish himself into being an author. And he had his physical copy in so many physical stores around the city. Okay. Like, Bro, really slept on, man. Let him out. Let him out. Hold on, man. Because I'm, like, I'm going through here, and I want to make sure I get stuff right, and I don't want to get nothing wrong. It's all good. Like I meant, I, I wrote down something that I um saw from your own. Um, look, just come back, and we're going to get yeah, come yeah. back, and we're going to have for you. Come back. Just come back. I um wrote a, a little nugget down from the book that I seen, and it was this. If kids learned about being an entrepreneur... At an early age for an hour a day, just like they taught English, math, and social studies, they'll be great. Right. You talked about this on the phone a little bit. Yeah. When, um, we I talked that, before. I wrote that in my, uh, about author. hmm Yeah. So, you really believe if kids learn about entrepreneurship, one hour out the day, just one, one, just one hour out the day, from what age? You'd be surprised what an hour out the day can do. Like, mm-hmm. you get what I'm saying? And I say, I say early, as early as they could pick up an iPad and learn how to operate it. Because you see a lot of these babies. I agree. You see a lot of these babies know how to operate an iPad at two years old. Or they'll take, the, they'll take their mama the phone room. and put the, put the password in quick. They'll know how to put it on. Like, ain't no way in the world a one-year-old, two-year-old can know how to do that. Mm-hmm. And not and they could go on there and, and cut on coca melon. But not how uh, to read. You know what I mean? A, a, a barely knowing how to speak a sentence. Right. You get what I'm saying? They could they, they see it. But my thing hear. is, my thing is, if you put something on for a kid for one hour a day, mm-hmm. even if they can't read it or not, they're gonna get adapted to what they're listening to. Exactly. And I it's agree. go it's gonna be more like it's gonna take in more. So it ain't about if they know how to read or not. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I look at it as like if you're able to 
put my put the audio on and let mm-hmm. them hit the audio for one hour a day. Just let them soak Cut up the, the TV off and let them let them hit the hit the audio for one hour a day. Mm-hmm. You'll be surprised how many beautiful minds that'll be able to grow into a uh, Bill Gates, uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying, bro? It, it's just the lack of information within our culture. That's all it is. And mm-hmm. it's, it's, they have people within our culture that have the information but wouldn't pour it to the youth, but will complain. About the youth. About the youth. So how can you complain about something that you're not even pouring into? How can you complain about your child if you don't pour into your child? I agree. That's a good I point. I feel like me writing these books is pouring into my children. Because mm-hmm. now I'm giving information to my bloodline, to my children, children, children. So when they go to their children and they go to their children, that's the only way these other cultures are winning, only because they share information that's passed down. Mm-hmm. That's tradition. Facts. You know what I'm saying? Agreed. The eight steps. I got around. I want to make sure. Did you put these? <laughs> did you put these in significance from one through eight? Or you just Bro, if I show wrote you them my, down? If I show you my presence, you gonna laugh at me because I'm so structured. Mm-hmm. But it started with ten. Okay. And then I brought said ten too many because I'm trying to like get to people. Like mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I feel like I won't keep talking about something and lead away from the conversation. Okay. What so, was the other two that you cut out? Man, I don't know, man. I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> facts. Okay. <laughs> but I broke it down to eight. And then when I did eight, uh I just went to like I just wrote ten things, I mean eight things down first and just, just started like putting it in you know, placing it in puzzle. order. Like okay. it's like a puzzle. Okay, what what do you feel? It's one of the most important ones out of all. If you can pick one from this list and show a kid or show an adult, this the one you need to focus on. I know you don't want to just pick one because all eight are the important, eight step, but which one? The eight step is that's the last step. Believe in yourself. Okay. You'd be surprised. Like everything that's, that operates around us was a thought from someone. Okay. It was that person actually taking their time out their day for an hour. They are manifesting that. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So from from the mics we speak and to the TV people watch, you know what I'm saying? That was someone's thought. And okay. believe me, yourself can do more than you ever could imagine. Okay, New New Orleans, Louisiana. I know that. What you feel the state of New Orleans is at in the entertainment climate? Because books is a form of entertainment. So what do you feel New Orleans is at as a whole? I feel like if the right people touch it, they could go far. Like mm-hmm. you know, like if if the uh. The youth that my arrive for nine, like you know, mm-hmm. Rob drop a book, you be like that's that's Back changing the culture, <laughs> but, that, but that's changing the culture for the kids. You know that's name in Vulture Island. <laughs> Listen, actually, like I got something in the vault called "Clean Keeping Vulture Island Clean" by Rob for nine, and All it's right. teaching children how to not uh, litter. Mm-hmm. Like this, the the more they keep, the cleaner they keep their environment, the safer their environment become. The less the the less crime that'll happen within their environment. So it's called keeping Vulture Island clean. So yeah, let's manifest that one. You manifest me? that. Tap in. Look for a collab. <laughs> you will get tagged on this rap. So push that to the youth. Keeping Vulture Island clean, man. Facts. Now, what um impact did New Orleans have on you growing up? Bro, like when you from here, it have a big impact on you. Cause mm-hmm. when you step out and you see the world, cause we be so stuck in our own little right. world in New Orleans. Orleans. Own little culture. When we step out, like people, like when people, when I open my mouth, bro, people be like, "Man, you gotta be from New Orleans." Like you know, it's, <laughs> that's how you know it's one of them cities that stand out. And you right. be at, you be surprised how many people admire just our the way we talk, the way we conduct ourselves, handle mm-hmm. ourselves more than the image that some people try to portray as just violent. Okay. Um one one thing in the in the book world you um touched on your publishing a little bit. How does publishing work with partnering with a publishing company? It's re- it's really really more easy than people think. It's like just reaching out. Mm-hmm. Like I just like like I said, like if, if you're a rapper and you wanna get signed to this label, what you gonna do to get to the label? You gonna reach out. You know what I mean? It's more like believing in yourself, like mm-hmm. Taking that chance on yourself, roll that dice with yourself, man. You'd be surprised how many people actually like took their time out to hear what I had to say. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? And when you have your moment, have your moment. Don't be afraid to have your moment. You can't ask for something to be afraid and have, and when that moment comes, you don't let you don't let your light shine. Right. You 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 come to the table, you asking for a certain amount of money and they give it to you. Don't like, be shocked. You know what I mean? uh, don't even be afraid when they hit you with a callback. Like right. you know, this is what you asking for. Like, bro, I I reached out to you. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's 
rolling the dice on yourself all, every time, man. Mm-hmm. People go, if you ha- if you really have something to talk about that's worth talking about, mm-hmm. you go get the love you deserve. Okay, now, do you um plan on writing different type, different styles of bro, books? I'm so, <laughs> I'm so, <laughs> oh, yeah, huh? bro, like, it's crazy because my team, we, man, mm-hmm. bro, the people are going to see books where kids are able, trace books where kids are going to be able to learn penmanship. Mm-hmm. I have a, a, a book for women where, that teaches book for kids. for women, how, okay. A, a book that teaches kids how to help their mom through uh, postpartum depression. Oh, you okay. know what I'm saying? We're touching real topics that's going to help change the culture and help the that's culture. That's a big deal right there, the postpartum. Uh, I also have, I have a, book, a book that I'm working on that's teaching kids how to... Uh, Exercises that help kids decrease their uh, their mental their mental anxiety levels. Mm. You know what I mean, bro. So we touching a lot of topics, bro. And we not playing. We giving. We doing trace cards, activity books, mm-hmm. business journals, prayer journals. We like we a book. A book ain't just a reading book. A a book could be any book. Mm-hmm. Coloring books. We doing everything, man. We go let these kids know we here. Okay. What is uh, end goal for uh, well for you. I'm gonna. I'm I don't not feel like just I have for all authors. I don't feel like I have none. Mm-hmm. I feel like my goal is to teach my culture, and that ain't no end to doing it. Mm-hmm. I want to pass the baton on to somebody that's gonna keep doing it and go keep going on and on. Okay, how would that look though? The teaching of your culture. Mm-hmm. From what position do you? How do how do you scale to be able to do that to reach? A bunch of the kids in your culture by having the right team around you, mm-hmm. having the same people with the same vision, people that believe, the people that not just believe in your vision but believe in you to deliver the vision. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? My team believe in me, and I believe in my team. So it's like when you have a team, and when you're blessed to even have a team, mm-hmm. you play your role so the machine could go well. Right. Everybody play their role, man. Mm-hmm. Nobody is more overseeing than the other person, you know. Okay. So, what are um certain positions on your team? So, What's the n- uh, so right now, you know, uh, I'm starting a publishing company. Okay. And it's called R Five Productions. Shout R5. out to R Five Productions, man. Shout out to my brothers, man. <laughs> you know, uh, Rob, Robert Lewis. He's my CFO. I'm the mm-hmm. CEO. He's the CFO. Okay. And I have Donaldo Williams. He's a he's the uh, He's over productions. Mm-hmm. And shout out to the Gum Squad. The Gum Squad are my narrators. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Y'all got to go check them out on Instagram at I Am Mutant Gum Squad. I think that is. If I'm wrong, I'm so sorry, y'all. But they're, man, those That's kids. For the audio book. Those man. kids, yeah. Those kids on their, their digital, young digital creators, they, man, they so good. Mm-hmm. And their dad, he he does all their productions. That's, that's who uh, is signed with us at R5. Okay. But I think they hit a million, like, at least over 10 times. I hit a million what? Views. Damn. A million views. Man, that's crazy. And they, they narrate your um, books? They're going to narrate all my books. Okay. Every book that I drop, they're going to narrate. How old are y'all? Oh, man, like 10 and 11. Like, they're young. Okay. They're kids. Man, young yeah, superstars, then. Man, what? Young greatness, man. Okay. Young greatness. Um, what, What's your favorite part about... What's your, I, what are some advantages and disadvantages of being a writer or author in the book game? The advantage is you have control over what you want to feed your culture, mm-hmm. what you're talking about, like, you know, what your mission is. Mm-hmm. And the disadvantage is everybody don't understand how how much it takes to be an author. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just as much as respect as you would give a rapper, you should give an author. I agree. I totally agree. <laughs> now... What is something you would tell someone who would look at your interview? They never seen an author from New Orleans. Yeah, they, I'm sure they have plenty, but yeah. they probably don't know anyone notable and recognizable and come from the same place like you do. Yeah, what would you tell them about picking up a pen, picking up the finger, and start writing their first book? You could change your mama life not just by shooting a hoop, uh, scoring a touchdown, or uh, even. Mm-hmm. Writing a rap lyric, you could change your mama life with books. You could change your mama life with film. Mm-hmm. You could change your mama life however you choose to change your mama life. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Take a path. I chose a path that I know nobody wasn't walking, but 
you know, I serve a person higher than me, so I know I could take any walks alone. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And when I'm done with it, it's gonna change my mom, my life, change my family and my children's life for the rest of their life. Facts. Now, you haven't been an author too long, you told me. That's why I keep saying, bro. <laughs> you hear me talk about God a lot. I've been doing this for a year. A year. One year I started as an author, then I fin I'm finishing, not even finishing, but I'm transitioning into a publisher. So, you know, I write. Okay. I produce. I'm the, you know, I ain't just a machine, but we, you know, like we got access to all the keys now. Facts. Now, what's the most important thing you learned within this year of being an author? Self, mm-hmm. man. Like you know, I have to sacrifice a lot to be to to be what God allowed me to be at, man. Because when you call to, to serve a purpose, bro, you know, you leaving, you leave behind some people that that you do if you really do this for. You know. I, I, it's hard because you know family and friends is that's that's who make me who I am, mm-hmm. and when I have to do things, certain things, where I'm I'm away from the people that I love. Mm-hmm. It's hard to actually stay focused all the time. Right. You know what I'm saying? But understanding that it's only for a season is the thing that get me through it because it's like you just got to put in that work, put in that work first, and then you know you'll be able to kick your feet up later and be thankful for it. Okay. Um. Now. Topic, um, little segment I always have when I come on here yeah. to get a little bit away from your occupation and your craft. Right, right. Craft, we're gonna get a little bit some relationship cards <laughs> out for you. Are you open to these? That's good. Bro. All right, we're gonna get a few just to get the people to see where the author mind is at on some of these topics that yeah. I have now. I'm gonna pick out one. I seen you a um, married man. I'm not married. I see you, um, a man with kids and a woman. <laughs> I'm not married. I'm not married. Well, let's say relationship then. Um, a person you like it you like admits the cheating in every serious relationship they had, but Hold says on. they've changed. Is this a deal breaker? Explain. Hold on, say that one again. You caught me up, go ahead. A person you like admits. To cheating in every serious relationship they had, but they say they changed. Is this a deal breaker? Explain. It's not a deal breaker for me. Okay. It's not a deal breaker for me because everybody bring out a different side of every person. Okay. So I ain't, you know, is it something to like, you know, be aware of? Antennas up. You know, but. Even antennas not gonna make me my antennas up not gonna make me assume. So nah, I ain't I ain't doing too much. We gonna keep it calm, keep it cool. Okay, you giving a serial cheater the benefit <laughs> of the doubt. I, okay, you're a good Everybody guy. Everybody deserves the benefit of the doubt. Thanks, bro. okay. I agree. When first meeting them, I agree. Um you dating a person in a city and want to wait until marriage to have sex. How would you respond? Ooh, that's tough. That's tough, but listen though, you gotta respect people boundaries. Okay. Bro. And if you one of those people that can respect people boundaries, if you you know if you that person, I don't really like you know, cause it might it might they might not want to wait till they want get married, but it might be they won't feel comfortable with knowing who they go be with. <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't know. Okay. But what I'm saying is like you know respect people boundaries, man. Um, what's the longest a woman ever had you wait? Six months. Six months. Facts. What, Six what, months. Were you happy waiting? And she know who she is. Were you happy waiting? Uh, was it? Come on, babe. Bro, like when you, f- man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I keep it pee, man. Okay, yeah, let's go. I keep it pee. Um, let me throw a couple more for you. I don't want to get you in a doghouse. <laughs> <laughs> After having, I ain't gonna do that. Right That's too raw, bro. I ain't gonna do that one. Right You're author, better. Your best friend tells you that they accidentally. Kissed your ex one time while you were together. What happens next? I'm straight on both of y'all. Damn. Y'all snakes. No benefit of the doubt? I, ain't no benefit of the doubt. <laughs> man, what we benefit? Well, no. This ain't, ain't no benefit of the doubt me. right now. <laughs> this ain't happening before me and my partner. No, we don't even, man. Come on, man. We keep so, it 2P over here. So um, the exes are off limits, even if you don't get like. Man, you, care about you bro, got listen, the partner. Got to get the green light before. This, yeah, respect is respect. Giving okay. all the way around the board. Like okay. that's it. So, um, if your partner come to you and be like, "Man, 
I won't go at your ex. We don't touch baby mamas. That's yeah, it. yeah. Well, of course, nobody That's with it. kids. Nah, but nah, them just you know. Okay, all right. Everybody else, they can have them for the streets. It ain't with me. Heard that. <laughs> Man, see, keep it two p. All right, let's go. Let's go one more. Well, on a scale of one to ten, what, 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 how, how, how um volatile you want to go with a question? Cause they got some. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna let you choose your um fate. <laughs> and then it calls out on the table or something. Yeah. I can't. Let you pick one, bro. Go ahead, pick one. Man, this dude funny, bro. Let you pick one, brother. Sheesh. Uh, last one. Read him out. A couple is staying in a relationship because of the kids. We just spoke on kids. Is this noble or foolish? Explain. Ooh, we. Honestly. Okay. They crazy if they stand for the churn. <laughs> well, churn go beat up, fool. Man. Churn go beat up. The babies go always be all right. You got to have peace. Peace. And bless <laughs> Peace and blessings, man. I ain't yeah. stand for the kids. I love my kids, though. Damn, damn, damn. All right. Back back to um you. When creating, you say you have a lot of stuff on the way and when creating different things, how do you juggle this? You say you work overnight. How do you juggle a job and keep that creative mind, that creative mindset in your head that, hey, the job is cool, but we trying to be an author full time. We trying to change the world full time. So when I do something like I do it, very like organized. So I got I work security mm-hmm. overnight. So how much time do a security officer get? Yeah, a you lot, got a of, lot time. of time. So Man, with me, I feel on. like in my mind, I'm knocking out two birds with one stone. Yep. Like I don't write until I get the work because now I'm writing on time. You know what I mean? That's right. how I look at it. Like mm-hmm. in the daytime, I'm pushing the book. I'm doing things that. Going to my meetings and stuff like that. That's pushing the book. Uh-huh. But at night, that's the time I write. Because I'm at work. I ain't got nothing else to do anyway. Okay. How does promotion work for a book? Bro, I look at it just like a business. So it's just like how you promote a business. Like uh-huh. inst- through Instagram, social media. You know what I'm saying? Touching just allowing people to see what you do. How people know what you're doing if you don't show them. Right. If you don't, uh, if you, how people know like how many... Sites you don't touch if you don't have your receipts. You know what I mean? So just showing things, different little things, different rails. You know what I'm saying? Different mm-hmm. accolades. You know what I'm saying? What did Darren think he would be when he was growing up? A motivational speaker. Okay. Didn't think he was going to be through books. Though. I was about to say, you basically that. You didn't still. Think through, uh, books. I didn't think it was through books, bro. No cap. But so you yeah. really thought you were going to be a motivational speaker? Why you thought that? I just like people. Mm-hmm. And I, I know uh, the more relatable you are. The more people you could touch. Mm-hmm. So um that that's that's still not a goal of yours. That's still that's, that's, that's still that's, very that, but no, it's like it's like how everything went full circle. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. Um the book has released. Are you satisfied with the release and are you satisfied with the reaction that it's been getting in reviews from people? Yeah, I'm satisfied. Mm-hmm. I'm satisfied because it's only gonna go up. You okay. I mean? Um I never saw myself becoming a publisher. A year ago, I ain't, I ain't, the book ain't even been out a year yet. Mm-hmm. It, it's gonna be a year in February. February second, make a year. Okay, you know what I'm saying. So, 258 platforms, 62 foreign countries. You know what I'm saying. Talk heavy, okay. Um, do any negative reviews? How does that affect you, or how do you look at that? Nothing affect me because mm-hmm. I know I'm this guy's work. Ain't nothing affect me, bro. Cause it's like those same those. We can all have different opinions. All right. So we'll make our opinion wrong. It don't. You know but do you mean? take constructive criticism From in anybody, a comment? I could take constructive criticism in my face. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's like we can't, you, we could construct the criticism, but it's already, what's done is done already. All right. And it's on 258 platforms. Look at it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Okay. Um. <laughs> does, does, any does Darren have any hidden talents other than writing? This is my hidden talent. I was about to say other than writing because you didn't think that was coming, but other than writing, <laughs> that's the only hidden talent I got, bro. And I don't know how to play basketball. I'm good at shooting pool. I'm not a shoot pool. Oh, so you're a gambler? That's what you're nah, I ain't no me. gambler. I'm not a shoot pool. That's oh, all so I said. You don't hustle people. No, I'm not a shoot pool. That's it. Okay, heard. Now, any um, 
Anything new coming out? You say the book makes uh, his one year anniversary in February. Is anything releasing so, in the end of twenty twenty two? No. <laughs> the next book that's going to be released is going to definitely be under my publishing company, R Five Productions. You know that. So, do you have? Is it done? At least. So my first five months in Houston, I wrote four books. Mm-hmm. Like I have, a, I have, I have. The artillery, you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. just about me wanting to Execute. have my own publishing company. So it's like, if we go take this walk, we go do it the right way, mm-hmm. correctly, one way, the right way, one way. And I don't want to, like, backtrack. So it's like, my publishing company, they own my publishing. They own, you know, they own my publishing. And I'm I'm grateful to have that publishing company because there's many people that are taking advantage of great ideas, you know what I'm saying? So those people are actually really walking with me. And when I decided that I wanted to start my own publishing company, they decided to become my coaches and give me access to all the other platforms my first book have. So every accolade my first book touch, I have access to those same keys due to my publishing company. So they always have my respect. Okay. Seems like publishing is a big deal. You're very adamant on having your own publishing that's company. Like, that's like owning your masters, bro. Okay. That's like owning your masters, for real. Bro. When when owning your own publishing, if you didn't own your own publishing, could you still, I guess, license your book out like to platforms or other people who wants to you, use your content? You have a, when you have a publishing company, you you really can't do much without those publishers' requests because they're like, like if oh. it was rap, like rap, like a record label got your distribution. You want to put an album out, you got to come to them. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Like it's it's only. Especially when you written under contract. Okay, so t- no book is coming out. Top of twenty twenty three. I'm, I'm assuming no we're book. Get look, some. no book coming out, but we still got big things coming though, man. Like the book is going in physical. St- I have physical stores that the book is going in. I okay. also got the audio that's about to drop, mm-hmm. and we also about to drop a cartoon next year as well. Mm-hmm. I, who did the illustration? Man, it's a female, man. She did the, she did the illustration. Beautiful illustration. Man, she is so elite, man. <laughs> She's so elite. She's so elite, and I'm so grateful for her. But that was my publisher work. She put us all together. Okay. Because I wanted all black people to write this, like, to bring this book to life. Mm-hmm. Um, Did you, with the illustration, did you tell her the type of pictures you wanted? Man, like, no. Like, that was, she look, came up with it Let me herself. tell you, like, this is my publisher work. Like, okay. my publisher is so good at what she do, and, and she's from New Orleans. Okay. You um, know, but she's so good at what she do. She not. A, it take a great mind to bring great minds together. So she she brought somebody together. She gave a price. The chick gave a price. I do, man, huh? Take that right now before I spend it. Like take it. <laughs> yeah, and she, man, I never like. It's good. It feel good when you put your money into something and you see the the effects. Pays of it. off. Thanks. Now, what's next for you, man? Any last words for the people before we get out of here, man? What's next for what's next for me is R Five Productions. That's my uh, publishing company that I'm doing. Then right after my publishing company, we have a, uh, a activity book that we dropping by the Gum Squad by my narrators. My narrators, I'm I'm writing a book for them, dropping a, a activity book for them for kids. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got the we got the cartoon coming next year. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Shout out to my bro man Yoshi. Yoshi is not just my manager. But he's also have full creative control over my author brand. You know okay. what I mean? He's nice with the lens. You know what I mean? Okay. So shout out to Brody, man, because we got this cartoon thing stirring up, and man, when we, when that touches, it's gonna change. Everything. And the cartoon is like a, a animation, like it's gonna be a, a film. An, it's gonna be an animated, a short animated series about okay. my first book. Okay, cool. All right, I'll just make sure it wasn't the book. All right, man, y'all heard it here first. Well, probably not first, but y'all heard it. Nah, hey, y'all heard it here first. That's yeah. first. That's oh, y'all heard it here first. Exclusive That's information really exclusive, right there. Man. Yeah, really exclusive. Once again, man, we got Darren Henry, author, man. father, son, brother, philanthropist, inspirer, philanthropist, yeah. entrepreneur, everything. Everything. And this is the T Vizzles podcast, and we out. Merry yeah, Christmas. Man. Shout out to T. Thanks.